intermittent fasting. So we're into week four of the month and I'm talking about things related to nutrition. And this week I'm going to talk about four different methods, approaches to changing our eating that you may have heard of, that you may have tried, that you may be interested in exploring. And in today's video, I'm going to cover what is probably the most kind of fashionable at the moment, and that is intermittent fasting, which is basically periods of not eating. It's where we have a set window where we allow ourselves to eat and another set window where we don't. So we might decide that we only eat between, say, 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. Or we might have certain days of the week where we allow ourselves to eat more and certain days of the week where we eat less because we stop eating at certain times. And with intermittent fasting, it's a perfectly valid method and it works brilliantly for some people. But the thing to remember, as with the rest of the methods this week, is there's nothing magical about it. It doesn't do anything particular other than perhaps create a situation where you reduce your overall calorie intake. By having a cutoff, it often stops us having those extra bits that would take us from calorie maintenance or deficit up into surplus. Some people will tell you it does magical things to your hormones, not much research to back that up. And even if it does, we, even with those different hormone levels, it doesn't affect the fact that being in a calorie deficit will lose your weight, being in a calorie surplus will gain weight. That always exists. So intermittent fasting may work for you because that hard and fast rule is something you feel you can stick to. By stopping eating at, say, 7 p.m., we're likely to remove those things that put us into surplus. I often say a, a tub of Ben and Jerry's and a bottle of wine would be equally fattening if we had it for breakfast, but we never have it for breakfast. We have it at half nine on the sofa with our other half. If we have a cutoff that stops things like that happening, or a tube of Pringles, or a large bar of dairy milk, or whatever else it is that could send us into surplus, none of those things are inherently fattening but they're often very energy dense, very easy to overdo portion size wise, and often the thing that just puts us again over our daily requirements energy wise. So if it works for you, brilliant. Whether that be a certain number of days of allowing a certain amount, a certain number of days of, of more restriction, whether it be a cutoff time in the day, whatever it is, if that rule enables you to reduce your overall calorie intake, brilliant. If that rule actually makes you feel that you failed when you don't feel you can follow it, not so good.